So suppose F is differentiable. So consider now consider what directional derivative is what? It is nothing but the rate of change. So it is x naught plus t u one comma y naught plus t u two, right? So let us consider this function. Okay. So it is a function of t goes to x t y t. The chain rule is coming into picture now. T goes to x. So this is x t. And this is y t. F takes x t y t to some value in R, right? So if f is differentiable, the function x t that is differentiable. So composite function is differentiable. Chain rule applies. So conditions of chain rule are met if f is differentiable. Implies what is the derivative of this? What is the derivative of this function? Let us call it as w t. T goes to one variable. So, what is the derivative of this function? Chain rule f of x, right? F of x at x zero y zero. What is the derivative of this with respect to t, x t? So that is u one plus u two f y x zero y zero. That is the derivative of this function. So that is d w by t t. Right? And what is this? We are looking at the derivative of this function, right? So what is this equal to? One end, if I look at as the composite function, right? If I and so this is the rate of change of this composite function, right? What is the rate of change of that function we looked at? That was precisely. What was that? That is the directional derivative. So it says, if I look at The apply the chain rule. This is nothing but the directional derivative of uh, f x naught y naught. So if the function is differentiable, right? Then the directional derivative exists and is given by this. I don't have to go to the limit or anything because I have, uh, limit is taken care by the chain rule now. Okay. Is that okay, comfortable for everybody or not? So I am looking at this function. I am. What is the what is the derivative of this? This minus divided by t, right? And that is precisely the directional derivative, isn't it? If I want to calculate the w t, if I want to calculate its derivative, what I have to do? This minus f at X zero y zero divided by t limit of that, right? That is by definition. So that is by definition it is this. By chain rule it is this. So both are equal. That's all, right? So it says if so theorem says if f is differentiable at x zero y zero then The directional derivative of f 
in the direction of x 0 y 0 is precisely equal to u 1 f x plus u 2 f of x 0 y 0. Right. Okay. From here, uh, let us a bit of uh, vectors. Let me write this right hand side in terms of vectors. I want to write. So let us write. Uh, so th I'm saying this is equal to u1 comma u2. That are the components of the given vector u. Dot product with f x x 0 y 0 and second component f y x 0 y 0. I am creating a new vector given the function f if it has partial derivatives then this gives me a vector f x partial derivative comma f y partial derivative. So, this can be thought of as a dot product of these two vectors now right this can be thought of as a dot product of these two vectors and this is a very important uh, 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 quantity associated with a function so for f which is on d in r2 to r this vector fx at the point x0 y0 fy at the point x0 y0 is a vector it is denoted by inverted triangle of f at the point x 0 y 0 and it is called the gradient of f at x 0 y 0 it is called the gradient of f at the point x 0 y 0. For three variable, it will be a vector of with components three. So, f z will come, but the interesting thing is so, if I write that way gradient of f dot u at that point is equal to the directional derivative in that notation. Now, you see how things get interpreted. So, directional derivative intuitively is the rate of change of the function in that direction, right? And that is equal to the gradient times u. When, okay. Now, here is a bit of vector uh, algebra. A dot b, you can write as norm of this norm of u into what is a dot b norm a norm b into cos of the angle between them. So, cos theta right this norm is 1. So, we can forget that. Now, what is the theta this is a vector gradient is a vector u is a vector right. So, this is theta is the angle between the two. So, and it is cos of theta when is cos theta minimum angle is pi by 2 and then it is 0. So, it says the rate of change of the function is 0 at that point in the direction of the gradient when u is angle is 0. So, direction of u is same as direction of gradient right. So, it says the rate. So, interpreting this in terms of rate of change. So, rate of change of the function f is 0 when direction is that of the gradient. Are you following what I am saying? No? Okay. So, let me let me interpret it again. It says gradient of f at point x 0 y 0 is a vector dot product with u is equal to directional derivative 
f at the point x 0 y 0 right ok. And this we said it is equal to gradient of f norm of gradient of f into cos theta because that is 1 is equal to d u f at x 0 ok. So, theta equal to 0 implies what or theta equal to pi by 2 implies what cos is 0 right implies d u f at x 0 y 0 is equal to 0. So, what is the meaning of saying this is 0? If I interpret it as the rate of change. So, rate of change of the function f in the direction of u is 0 when u is same as direction is same as that of gradient because then, then only the angle is 0. Angle between the gradient and u is 0 or oh sorry pi by 2 when perpendicular sorry when it is perpendicular. So, rate of change of the function is 0 in the direction perpendicular to that of gradient right and when it is maximum when it is equal to 1 pi is uh, angle is 0. So, rate of change of the function is maximum in the direction of the gradient is it ok yes. So, this is a physical interpretation you can imagine uh, a plate surface is a, some kind of a plate right and uh, there is a vector given and the gradient vector is there at any point ok. So, and if at a point I want to know and you are measuring the temperature function is the temperature at a point of the plate and as you move on that plate in which direction the rate of change of temperature is maximum or minimum you would like to know you are walking on a hot plate right and you do not want your feet to be burnt right. So, you would like to seek the path direction in which temperature rate of change direction should be minimum. So, that is perpendicular to the at that point find out the gradient that is the minimum maximum when it is parallel to it. So, these are physical applications this kind of a thing ok though it is purely mathematical ok. Uh, something more I should uh, say about this ok here is another th interpretation of this. So, uh, so let me just write rate of change of f is minimum when u is perpendicular to gradient of f it is maximum when u is parallel to gradient of f is that ok that we have seen ok. Um, see how uh, these things lead to physical applications. So, here is another one. So, let us take uh, f a function of two variables again. So, we saw it is graph is a surface right. So, this is a surface S. So, graph of f is x y f of x y. Now, in this what is happening is should introduce the notion of a general surface or not ok. So, here is where z is equal to f of x y right the z coordinate is taken. Uh, 
Yeah, it's going a bit f away from what we. Uh, okay, but let. So this is kind of a surface, but uh, the point is not every surface looks like z is equal to f of x y. For example, if you look at the sphere, what is the uh, equation of sphere? Is all points x y and z say that x square plus y square plus z square equal to some constant, right? That is the radius square. So here there is a relation between x y and z. So a sphere, right, which normally we write as x square plus y square plus z square equal to say something, say nine. What do, what do you mean by that? That is the equation of a sphere. That means we are looking at the points x, y, and z. Say that there is a relation, right? So as an object in R three, it is given by this equation. Now here z is not you cannot calculate z in terms of x and y because there is only a relation given. So if you want to calculate, it will be z square equal to nine square nine minus x square minus y square. So z will be plus minus square root. If you take plus, it will give you the upper part of the sphere. If you take negative, it will give you the. So this is this is what we call as A implicit equation of surfaces. Z is not explicitly known; it is only implicitly given. Okay, right. So uh, there are many surfaces which are of this type. For example, if you take shape of an egg, that is called ellipsoid. That is also implicit. Okay. Some are explicit, some are implicit. What I want to do is, I want to look at a curve on this. I want to look at a curve on this surface, right? So let us take. The, so this is in R three, right? Surface is in R three. I want a curve on R on this surface. So what is a curve? What is a curve? It's like a path of a particle. Imagine a fly moving around in the room, right? At some, you start observing at t equal to zero. It is at somewhere t equal to one. It is somewhere t equal to two. Somewhere uh, moves around. To locate its position, we have to know what is the coordinates x t, y t, and z t. So a curve is a function from R to R three. T goes to x t y t z t okay so let us call it as a function r okay any curve is a path of a particle you can imagine at some time you are observing what is the position of something you can think it as way so uh, at t it gives a point which is in here so this is the point p i want this curve to be on the surface then what should happen if it is to be on the surface then what should happen it should satisfy the equation of the surface so on s means z is equal to z of t is equal to f of x t y t Right? Is that okay? Because z was equal to f of x y, so z of t must be equal to that, and that I can write as f of x t y t z t. Oh, sorry, uh, f of x t y t. Minus z t equal to zero. Right, brought everything on the one side. For every t to be on the surface. Okay.
This is a function of t. Now mathematics enters into picture. This function is zero everywhere. So what happens to the derivative of this? Also should be zero. What is the derivative of left hand side? Implies. What is the derivative of left hand side? F x, right? Into x dash t. Sorry, into x dash of t plus f y z dash of t minus z dash of t equal to zero. Right. I want to rewrite this now as a vector equation. So it is f x, f y minus one dot x dash t, y dash t, z dash t equal to zero. This equation, yeah, I'm just differentiating this with respect to t. This is chain rule, and that is z t only. So z that. Oh, this one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I I meant y dash. I wrote as z dash. Sorry, sorry. That mistake. So that is y dash. Sorry. Right? Is okay now? Everybody happy? Yeah. So. This quantity multiplied by this quantity is zero. What is this quantity? Geometrically, x t, y t, z t was the point on the surface. This is the derivative. So this is the tangent vector to the curve at that point. And says this vector is perpendicular to the tangent vector. So what should be this vector? It should be normal to the surface. This vector is perpendicular to whatever curve I take, right? So in the picture, at this point, right, there is a vector which is which is not changing because the vector is f x f y. It depends only on f. There is a vector, right? And of course, z component is minus one, so whichever their direction. But at a, at this point, if I take the tangent. Then this vector is perpendicular. If I take some other curve, take the tangent, still it is perpendicular. So this is a vector which is perpendicular to all tangents to all the curves. So what this vector should be? This we should call it as the normal to the surface. We should call this vector as normal to the surface. All the tangents will lie in a plane that will be the tangent plane to the surface. Right, so we are going back to saying derivative helps us to define tangent. So what we are doing is we are saying that derivative in the following sense: the partial derivatives for a function of two variable, partial derivative we assume they are uh, differentiable, right? So partial derivatives exist and are continuous and so on. Then this vector. Is perpendicular to this. That means this vector f x, f y minus one, is perpendicular to is is perpendicular to every tangent vector. So we we call this as so this is called this meaning. Fx, Fy minus one is called tangent vector. So, to the surface at that point zero y zero z zero. Right? Some confusion. Is called uh, sorry, not uh, normal. Sorry, 
is called the normal vector to the surface at plane perpendicular to this is called the tangent plane. is called the tangent plane to the surface S at x 0, y 0, z 0. So, I am just trying to bring out the similarity between one variable and several variables. In one variable, we had continuity, we had differentiability, right. Continuity meant that there is no break in the graph of the function and differentiability was something stronger which implied continuity and said that at every point you can draw a tangent. So, same way we are saying in three variables differentiability you can define right and differentiability implies continuity and differentiability means that at every point right on the surface you can have a on the graph of the function that is the surface you can have a tangent plane and that we are coming via normal. We are saying there is a normal, normal is the gradient vector. Gradient vector is a very crucial one, it tells you how the things are changing on the surface. Name gradient right, itself should indicate English word gradient should indicate. So, rate of change is maximum, if it is, it is maximum when it is parallel to the gradient right and minimum when it is perpendicular to the gradient, gradient is also the direction of the normal geometrically right to the surface at that point. You may be wondering why this minus 1 is coming, because our surface is explicit z is equal to f x y. If you take a sphere, if you take the sphere x square plus y square plus z square equal to 0. So, let me just let me just indicate if you take the sphere is x square plus minus 9 equal to 0 say that is my f x y z that is the surface is given by a function of three variables which is implicit z is equal to f x y I could write it as f x y minus z is equal to 0, I could write this as f x y. There z was explicitly known in terms of, here z is not explicitly known, but still even if I take a curve on this surface, it will still have that thing, same property, x square y square z square. So, what is f of x t y t z t that will be that will be a curve on the surface that is equal to 0 on the surface. So, that is equal to 0. So, what is the derivative of this f x x dash f y y dash f z z dash t equal to 0 right that is same as saying f x f y f z dot x dash t y dash t z dash t equal to 0. Still you can what is this now? That is a gradient. For this what is the gradient? F z is minus 1. So, that is why this minus 1 is coming here. There is nothing special happening. For explicit when z is explicit that value will be 1 or minus 1 depending on whether you write z minus or this minus. In general, this will be the gradient vector which is the normal to the surface right. So, this is very useful in doing uh, what is called differential geometry later on that normals and so on. So, we will not be doing into that. My idea of bringing the directional derivative was to indicate that there is something called rate of change in any direction possible right and how it interprets geometrically. So, gradient vector is the one which is crucial. Okay. So, let us stop here.